What is going on with 0.9 repeating, or its relationship to a third, 0.3 repeating, two thirds, 0.6 repeating? And I think the best way to tackle this is to make a few distinctions. There is a difference between the value of a number, the process by which we figure out that value, and then the way that we write that value down. These are three different things. With 0.9 repeating, we only really have the last thing, the way that we're writing it down. The value is precisely what we're trying to figure out, and the process, it's not really clear what kind of process would generate 0.9 repeating. So let's switch to something where it is really clear. Let's talk for a second about one third. The value one third just is one third. It's a rational number, it's the ratio of one to three, or it's the fraction one third. There are lots of ways to write one third down. We could write it down one third, we could write it down two over six. We could write it down three over nine. So there's several different ratios that also work out to one third. But you're probably also aware that there's a special way we can write this number down as a decimal, as a base 10 number, and that's where we get this repeating idea, 0 0.3 repeating. We usually generate that idea from something like long division. That is, we take three and we say, well, how many times does it divide into one? And obviously the answer to that is zero, but we don't just wanna stop at zero, so we add some decimal we add some other zeros, and then we keep asking the same question. Now three goes into 10 how many times? Three times, and then we engage this process. Three times three makes nine. We subtract and it leaves us with one left over. We bring down another one of those zeros. How many times does three go into 10? Three times, three times three is nine, and then we subtract. And obviously pretty quickly into this we realize, oh, this process is going to keep going for as long as we're interested in writing down threes. I do think it's important to note here that if at any point we stop engaging in that process, we will have something that might be really close to one third, but will not be equal to one third. One third is pretty close to three tenths, but it's not quite the same thing as three tenths. One third is even closer to 33 hundredths, but it's not quite the same thing as 33 hundredths. A more rigorous way to write this down is to say that one third is the same thing as an infinite sum. If we were to add infinitely many fractions, three tenths, three hundredths, three thousandths, and so on, the sum of that infinite series would be one third. Now you should have a problem with that. I can't sum infinitely many fractions in the same way that we can't literally write down infinitely many threes after the decimal place. You should also think to yourself, well, why on earth are we trying to represent one third as a sum of infinitely many fractions when we could just as easily represent it as the sum of say, two fractions. One third is the same thing as one sixth plus one sixth. For that matter, you could express one third as the same thing as one ninth plus one ninth plus one ninth. And in fact, this gets us to the more fundamental question of what's going on here. The only reason that one third repeats as a decimal at all is precisely that in the decimal number system, we're interested in expressing numbers over some power of 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, and so on. If we were in a different base system, we wouldn't care about expressing it as some sum of tenths, hundredths, thousandths, we could just as easily express it as two sixths in the base six number system. And so as a hexamal or something, it would be a terminating hexamal. Or in the base nine system, we would represent it as 0 0.3 ninths, and that's the way we would say it. You might have noticed in our base 10 system, in our decimal number system, the only kinds of decimals that terminate are those that when we represent them as fractions, the denominators of those fractions always work out to something that only has twos and fives as factors. Any fractions where the denominator has factors other than two and five will be in some representation repeating decimals. So where does that leave us with respect to 0 0.9 repeating? What does it mean that we're going to have infinitely many fractions of the form 9 tenths, 9 hundredths, 9 thousandths, and we're gonna add those all together? Unfortunately, there's not really a good process for generating this infinite series of fractions outside of calculus. In calculus, though, you can represent infinite series pretty easily. We want a sum, that's what this weird looking E stands for, starting from the first term, which is going to be 9 tenths, and continuing on for infinitely many terms, but then the series itself, each term needs to be a tenth as large as it was a moment ago. A tenth of nine tenths is how we get nine hundredths. 
a tenth of nine hundredths is how we get nine thousandths, and so on. But I can tell you both algebra and calculus give us a way to calculate this sum. It ends up being nine tenth over one minus one tenth, that ratio that we're multiplying by over and over again, which you'll notice just so happens to work out to nine tenths divided by nine tenths. And of course, anything divided by itself is one. So strange as it may be, 0 0.9 repeating, not stopping at some point, not just a lot of nines after the decimal point, but actually infinitely many nines after the decimal point, or as we talked about, infinitely many fractions, nine tenths plus nine hundredths plus nine thousandths. By that process of taking an infinite sum, we can actually confirm that the value 0 0.9 repeating is the same as one. I hope that was a helpful explanation. I am curious. This is one of those concepts that as a math teacher, I always get pushback from students. So if you're someone who doesn't really trust this idea that 0 0.9 repeating should be equal to one, I would love to hear from you. Comment down below, let me know. Does this move you at all toward the position that actually, yeah, I guess 0 0.9 repeating really is one in some sense? Or are you convinced, no, there's no way that's true? If it was helpful to you, like this video. If you wanna see more math content like this, subscribe. If you wanna see a particular concept, Comment down below, ask for the concept. I'll try to put a video together for you. And otherwise, I'll see y'all next time.